Hello and welcome to my review of the Lumineth Realm Lords Alarith Stoneguard. Probably one of the most controversial box sets to have ever come out of Games Workshop. Mainly because it only consisted of three sprues and this set will set you back £36.50. In some ways, it's more atrocious than the Venari Dawn Riders box set, uh, which is £3 more at £39.50. You still get the same number of models, but usually with cavalry, I tend to think that you're getting double the models because the horse itself is quite a big detailed model. And usually the uh, model has a sword, a shield, and maybe even a spear, lots of other things going on. But these guys are just on a whole new level. Again, I don't want to spend the whole review crying about the price, but I will say I'm not sure what Games Workshop are doing uh, with these prices. It really, really does baffle me um, why they've set the price point of these at such a high amount. There's not really any customization uh, that they offer. Um, if you go back to some of the Intercessor box sets and the uh, Sisters of Battle box sets where they've taken away some of the choices. So you can either choose uh, you know, a stone guard or have one of them as the Seneschal. But that means if you want that unique stone guard, you're not gonna be able to get the uh, Seneschal. And it's a similar case for um, the Cerberus Raiders and, and other recent box sets. You either get the Sergeant or the, the main person in charge, and that's at the deficit of uh, one of those other models. And it's the same for the Banner Bearer too, the Standard Bearer. You can either go for the Stone Guard 2 or the Standard Bearer. Now I've gone for maximum variation that I possibly can um, in terms of the unique uh, models. So I've gone for the um, Seneschal and the Standard Bearer. If I got a second set, which is highly doubtful at this stage, but if I did, um, then yes, I'd have these two as slightly different Stone Guard. But you know what? I'd also be left with these three in exactly the same pose. The only difference, I could just swap those hammers out. Let's have a look at the box. It comes in this nice box, obviously. Uh, you, there is somewhat of a paint guide on, on the rear uh, for painting uh, Metrica and only two sort of color guides there. And there is a very short paint guide in the instruction guide. The instruction guide's all right. It does the job. It's quite clear to get through. And uh, there are rules for the stone guard, but no points cost as, as uh, you come to expect. Now, first thing we'll do then is we'll look at the models individually, um, look at all the detail. I'll go through the spare parts and then we'll go through the size comparisons and the rules. So it might be a bit of a lengthy, lengthy one today, guys. So this is one of them. I've uh, equipped them all with the diamond pick hammers. Uh, you don't have to, you can equip them with the stone mallets, but uh, they pretty much have to equip be equipped with one or the other. It's, it specifically says uh, the unit is armed with one of the following weapon options, stone mallet or diamond pick hammer. I know there are some pictures of some of them having uh, diamond pick hammers and some of them having uh, the stone mallets, but I'm pretty sure it says the unit has to have one of them and um, they can't have, you know, different variations. That's the way I'm reading it. That's the way it's on the box and that's the way I've seen it in, in other places. I really like the diamond pick hammers and um, you can't go wrong. I mean, I've chosen these. Yes, maybe uh, it would have been cool to have the stone mallets because they would have um, uh, had the same synergy as uh, the Alarith Spirit of the Mountain. Uh, however, Alarith doesn't have a diamond pick hammer. I just like them because they kind of remind me of Minecraft a little bit and dwarfs and uh, all kinds of things having these diamonds that can just uh, pick away at people. Uh, the models themselves do carry themselves quite well. I'm not really sure about this uh, cow kind of motif thing on the top of the helmet. I'm not sure about the weight issues. They're the only kind of unit I'm, I'm not really convinced of uh, in all of these other than Teclis's pose. But Teclis's pose and this uh, weird kind of cow thing on the top of the helmet is a bit strange. Um, I get that they are stone guard, so there has to be some kind of like Alarith kind of shrine thing somewhere on them. Um, but uh, I'm not sure it kind of works. Um, maybe they could have had the cow on the forehead or the front. Uh, maybe they could have had the horns coming out of the helmet. Maybe they could have just incorporated um, the horns uh, with the helmet itself rather than just slapped it on the top. But the rest of the armor is lovely, lush, that uh, the tassets, these kind of thigh armor pieces, they are lovely. There's a lot of detail in there. 
they're kind of like indented with um, kind of vine art, vine scripture and, and things. So they're either going to be incredible to shade or a pain to paint the, the gold and then dry brush over it. Um, but the cloaks are really cool. They, their poses are super cool. Um, they really carry a sense of motion and weight. Uh, the standard bearer, it's all right. I like the wind that's affecting the um, banner. And uh, I like the, the little cow icon, iconography as well. And the eldritch, I suppose, elf symbols. Um, and he's got like a little hammer that he's holding, which is quite cool. Um, the uh, Seneschal uh, looks all right with his Jason Statham hammers, <laughs> no, his Stratham hammers. Um, again, uh, aiming the hammer there. I'd like to think that he maybe throws a hammer and it comes back to him. They're going through for like a, a Thor phase with these. Um, then you've got these two. Uh, again, really cool poses. Um, it's actually great that the Stone Guard, I think three, four, and five are in better poses than the um, Seneschal and the Standard Bearer options. Um, these are the three best ones. So if you do get another box set and you do get these th and you, you do make the variants of those, uh, you are gonna be left with these three in these awesome poses too. So this one is laying the smack down on a bit of scenery there, which is quite cool. Um, and also, I really like this one. And um, this is probably my favorite out of them. Um, but to swing the hammer, I just, I took the picture on Instagram that he's gonna swing that hammer uh, at Alarith's uh, knee just to wake him up or um, get him to, to move a bit. But uh, yeah, I, I really like this pose, super cool. And uh, I love the flowing capes as well. And I think the capes and the poses really save this kit. Um, but I still don't think that they're worth the, the asking price at all. If I had a crack at the price, I'd say no more than 30 pounds maximum. 25 would be great, but 30 pounds maximum. So before I do some size comparisons with all the other models, let's have a look at the spare parts. And pretty much you guessed it because you have a choice of using the um, stone mallets or the diamond picked hammers you get all of these. You get uh, the, obviously, shafts of the, the optional stone guard. And with the shafts, you get um, the kind of optional uh, mallets. I'm not sure if it is possible to put tiny little magnets in there and have them um, with diamond picked hammers or stone mallets, maybe, but it's uh, it's up to you. You wouldn't be able to use these on the two unique models, which means that you're going to have uh, one left with um, a diamond pick hammer, which doesn't really work. Anyway, um, you've got these stone mallet ends. Got quite a few of these. Actually, five of them. You've also got these two diamond picked hammers uh, ends, which I suppose you could put on bases. Maybe um, you could use this somewhere. This is quite a unique little piece. Um, and then you've got a helmetless head for the Seneschal with the strange uh, expression. And then you've also got uh, another helmeted version along with a um, couple of spare arms. So yeah, you don't get that many spare parts for your almost 40 pound kit. Okay, size comparisons then. So let's compare them to your standard kind of infantry models and things. So you've got the Wardens there and you've got the Sentinels. They are on all the same bases. I would probably say, size-wise, they are taller than the rest of you. Say troops, they're a bit taller with their helmets, but it is literally that cow on the top that makes them taller. Their cloaks are very impressive, but then again, I love the, the shield and the pike, um, or, well, it is a pike, it's not really a spe spear, but uh, I do, uh, I like the look of these, and I like the look of the uh, stone guard, um, but the uh, sentinels are just, yeah, not not as impressive as I uh, expected them to be. Um, but yeah, they're going to be similar sort of size, they're all on the same basis as I said. So yeah, they're going to be similar size to um, the rest of your troops, um, but they are going to stand out with these funky looking helmets. Maybe that's one of the reasons why Games Workshop did that. Compared to the uh, Venari Dawn Riders, um, yeah, obviously they're kind of dwarfed by them. 
And then compared to the, the character model, so you've got Light of Altharion, uh, you've got the Sonari, um, Cathalar, and you've also got the Stone Mage. Now, you know, you want to be, if, you, if you're getting the Stone Guard, you should really be getting a Stone Mage as well to bump up their rend characteristics. Uh, the Stone Mage has got that specific ability that will um, increase their, their rend for the weapons. It's specific for uh, the Stone Guard. So um, I wouldn't leave home without a, a Stone Mage. But maybe get a, a unit of 10 of them instead uh, of, of five. And then finally, uh, the last size comparison within Lumina Throne Lords I'd like to make is just with uh, Alarith. Um, I think they go really well with Alarith, uh, especially with the um, stone mallets, which I didn't equip mine with. Um, but uh, yeah, if you want the, the synergy with them, the stone mallets are the way to, way to go. Uh, but um, they share a load of aesthetics, not only because of the top head motif things, but also their armor and the uh, the shapes of the armor and the the look of the armor. Um, the only thing obviously missing with the Larith is uh, the kind of skirt I want to call it and the flowing cloak which Alarith doesn't have unfortunately. Okay and then the size comparison that I do like to make always is just with the three three kind of stooges which is uh, the Primaris on the right, Slamavo in the middle and then uh, normal legacy space marine on the left. So as you can see compared to the Seneschal um, he's yeah taller than a space marine i know he's in a bit more of an upright pose but pretty much taller than normal space marines and slime arbo is yeah a bit shorter and then a primaris is well head wise heads and shoulders above but the helmets you see these uh these cow things do make them taller than primaris overall um so there you go. And now we're into my part of the review where I will go through all of their rules. You'll find them in the brand new Lumineth uh, Realm Lords uh, Battle Tome. They are a battle line role in a, a Metrica army. Uh, they consist of five models, but you can have 15 and they will set you back 100 points. Their stat line reads, they're a movement of four inches, save of four plus, bravery seven and two wounds. That pretty much makes them very, very tough. Uh, you know, they've got two wounds instead of the one that the Sentinels and the Wardens have. Uh, their save is fantastic at 4+, plus, and um, that's the same save as the Dawn Riders. They've essentially got the same characteristic as the Cavalry, you know, the Dawn Riders, but they are also the slowest unit in the whole of the Battle Tome, um, by quite a margin. Even the big Alarith Spirit of the Mountain is, is a movement of speed of 6 inches, so this is a very slow unit. Now, a unit of Alarith Stone Guard has any number of models. The unit is armed with one of the following weapon options, Stone Mallet or Diamond Pick Hammer. So Stone Mallet or Diamond Pick Hammer, it has the same uh, stat line, but they do have different abilities. We'll go on to them in a little moment. But they're a range of one inch, two attacks, three plus to hit, three plus to wound, rend minus one and a damage of one. The Stratum Hammers is a range one inch, three attacks, three plus to hit, four plus to wound, nothing to rend and damage of one. One model in the unit can be a True Stone Seneschal. A True Stone Seneschal can be armed with a pair of Stratum Hammers instead of the unit's weapon option. The Standard Bearer. One in every five models in this unit can be a Standard Bearer. A standard Bearer is armed with a Stratum Hammer instead of the unit's weapon option. You can re-roll Battleshock tests for units that include Standard Bearers. Abilities. Crushing Blow. If the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a Stone Mallet is six, add one to the damage inflicted if the attack is successful. That's specifically for the stone mallet. You're getting uh, an extra one damage. So that'd be damage two. Diamond pick hammer, on the other hand, if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a diamond pick hammer is six, that attack inflicts one mortal wound on the target and the attack sequence ends. Do not make a wound or save roll. So you're forgiving the uh, ability to get more damage uh, than the hammers. However, they are going inflict, to inflict those mortal wounds, which I also think is a bit strange because your standard kind of battle line um, troops like your wardens and your sentinels have the sun metal weapons, which inflict them the uh, mortal wounds on a six. Uh, I just would have liked to have seen these guys have something on top of that. Um, but there we go. And then finally, a pair of stratum hammers. Uh, you can reroll hit rolls for a pair of stratum hammers. Uh, so you still get your three attacks, but you can re-roll the hits, which is a three plus anyway, so you might not um, fail them. The keywords, Order, Elf, Lumineth, Realm Lords, Elementary, Alarith, Stone Guard. So there you go. I think they're a strong unit, you know, two wounds each. That you're going to have ten wounds for the, for the unit. They're just a bit slow, and obviously Realm Lords, they don't have like a... Uh, I say a troop transport, you know what I'm, I'm talking about. They're going to have to slog it four inches across the battlefield. Will they even get in range of, uh, 
your enemy units, who knows. However, what I do know is if you take a stone mage with them, that is going to improve the rend characteristic of all their weapons. So you're going to be getting a rend minus two, um, which is incredibly helpful. What do you guys think of the stone guard and the models um, and the rules? Please do put it in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. Techless Protects.